All right, so um, here's my uh, my first lecture of the year. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go back and, and start with ancient Greece. It's gonna be a pretty quick lecture. Um, you're gonna write down what's on your line. Um, you don't have to write everything. Uh, if you need to go back, you could always watch the lecture. But I would focus on what's on your line. That's what will probably be. T uh, I'll be testing you on. So again, just write down what's on your line. Um, I don't. I, I don't I think the last time you guys have even studied this stuff was probably in sixth grade. Um, it's hard to really understand what's happening in 1492 if you don't know what happened prior to um, you know 1492. So we're going to go back a little bit. It's going to be pretty quick. Uh, today we're going to focus on the Greeks um, and the Romans and another group called the Persians. So again, just write down or copy down what's underlined. Um, and then again, we'll use that stuff on a quiz or a test. All right, so let's start with the Greeks. Uh, ancient Greece was a civilization that uh, emerges around 480 BCE. By the way, BCE used to be referred to as before Christ. Now it's called before the Common Era. Um, but it's really, again, this time period before um, we see um, the birth of Christianity. Um, the ancient Greeks were known for their city-states. Um, it wasn't a, a really a large empire, um, but the Greeks are really important. Um, even today, we, we really still, um, you know, base a lot of our institutions on the Greeks. Two of the famous city-states were Athens and Sparta. Athens is still, I believe it's the capital of Greece. And Sparta, if you've ever heard of those Spartan races, that those, um, you know, older people compete in, um, if you ever saw the movie 300, right? Uh, Sparta is known for um, their great military. Uh, children from birth are put into schools where they, you know, are taught how to be soldiers and warriors. Um, you know, again, we're not going to get into detail about those two cities, but um, just understand what you know ancient Greece, you know, looks like. Again, all these little city states that were almost like smaller, um, you know, countries within Greece. Uh, what we want to remember is Greece is basically, you know, democracy is born in Greece. And it's called a direct democracy. A direct democracy is very simple. Uh, there are no elected representatives. Every male um, person who was of wealth uh, got to vote on laws and other things. Um, they did have a court system. Um, they did not have necessarily an elected president. They usually had a ruler. Um, who was not chosen, but was in power because of their family um, lineage. But this is probably the, the earliest form of, of a democracy. Um, we also remember the Greeks for their great teachers, their scholars. We've had Socratic seminars. Well, the idea of a Socratic seminar comes from Socrates. And he encouraged people to question and to think and to, and to reason. Um, that got him in a little bit of trouble. Um, he was uh, assassinated for questioning, um, you know, the government. Um, Aristotle was another great philosopher. He also believed in the idea of kind of thinking and using logic and reason to solve problems. Um, but again, today we still use, or at least I try to use, the same ideas that Socrates put forth. The idea of asking questions to come up with answers rather than being told what the answers are. So Socrates and Aristotle, uh, that's, if you've ever seen the movie 300, again, the Spartans were fighting the Persians in the movie 300, and there's Socrates right there teaching a, a class of uh, scholars and other philosophers. Um, I'm going to kind of pause. When I pause, if you want to hit the pause button to copy some of the notes, that's fine. And then after I pause, I'm going to move on. All right, the Persians. The Persians, a uh, very large empire, much larger than Greece. The Persian Empire um, would today make up Iran over here, Iraq over here, Syria, Turkey, and even Afghanistan. Uh, the Persians, if you saw the movie 300, the Persians were, uh, that was the empire fighting the Spartans in the movie. Um, so, Again, what I want to remember for Persia would be uh, this king, King Darius. And he's important because he built a road called the Royal Road. And that's one of the first major roads. And it went throughout this entire empire. 
and it really facilitated trade um, with India and the Middle East. So we're going to start to see, you know, inter-empire trade. He also created the first postal service uh, along this road. Messengers would be passed on from, you know, district or region to region. Um, to allow for better political communication, even military communication. Um, he's also known for religious tolerance, and that was pretty um, unique back then. Um, the Persians believed in a single god uh, at times, um, and so they were okay with, with any, any type of religion, whether it was polytheism or, or monotheism. Um, however, if you did practice another religion, you did have to pay taxes and join the military. Uh, the Persians did have slaves. Most of these civilizations had slaves. They were usually um, prisoners of war. Um, in Persia, women actually had more rights than most groups. Women could own and manage property. They could even earn wages uh, through trade, and they could even initiate divorce. Again, that's pretty unique for this, this time period. So the Persians were a little more advanced when it came to you know, human rights. And there's King Darius. All right, so we I mentioned Zoroastrianism, and I can't even pronounce it, but it's basically the beginnings of monotheism. And this is fairly unique because the Greeks and the Romans were both polytheistic, where the Persians did encourage the idea of maybe a single god, um, not necessarily... Um, you know, a god like we would think a god, but more of a god of, of, of darkness. Um, and, and this idea that um, there was a heaven and a hell. It's very early, early forms of, 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 of kind of Christianity or monotheism. But there is the beginning of this idea that perhaps instead of many gods, there is one god. And that um, god actually shouldn't be worshipped. It's the, kind of the opposite. That this god was kind of, I wouldn't say evil, but he was a god, or she was a god that would promote um, negative things. So again, this idea that there was a, a good and a bad, a heaven and a hell. It's called Zoroastrianism. I'll, I'll never get that pronunciation. All right, so let's move on to Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great was not Greek. He lived in this region north of Greece called Macedonia, and he's actually famous for being one of the great uh, empire builders. Um, around 334 uh, BCE, um, and if you look at the map, he had a huge empire. Um, not as large as the Roman Empire, but again, this was all his. He, he's the conqueror of all of these worlds, um, especially Egypt. He established a city called Alexandria. In Egypt, and what he did, uh, and 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 we remember him for a very simple reason. Um, mostly, he spread Greek culture to the West. So you know, he was uh, not born in Greece, but he you know conquered Greece. He studied, I believe, under Socrates. He was one of Socrates, or Plato. I'm not sure, but one of the philosopher students. So he was a big believer in in the Greek you know, in the Greek ways, called Hellenistic culture. Um, he actually also encouraged a little bit of tolerance and diversity. He encouraged his generals to marry Persian women, to strengthen relations between, you know, um, the, I guess you could say, the East and the West. Um, he's going to bring Greek uh, philosophy and learning and architecture to um, the East um, from the West or from Greece. And again, his city, Alexandria, is going to become one of the great centers of learning. A lot of the Greek works are going to be stored there. Um, today, Alexandria is a vibrant coastal city on the Mediterranean. We have a few students who were, were born in Alexandria. Um, so we do remember Alexander for transferring or, or, or spreading you know, some, some great Greek pieces of culture and, and, and obviously learning and ideas. Uh, that's kind of uh, one. Of, this is actually, uh, I, I don't believe it still exists today, but this was built in Alexandria. It was kind of like the first lighthouse or, or tower. Uh, pretty impressive architecture and engineering for, you know, two or 300 BCE. Uh, I don't think it exists today, but um, it is one of those great wonders of the world. 
All right, so let's talk about the Roman Empire. This is a pretty quick lecture. 753 BCE to 400 CE, so a, a fairly long, you know, 1,100 years of, 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 of Roman um, empire building. If you notice, the Roman Empire was tremendous, probably the, the largest empire in the history of the world. The Romans had control of England, uh, modern-day France, Spain, Italy, um, Greece, uh, Persia, um, you can't see it down here, but also North Africa and even Egypt. So it was a massive empire. And I do want to reiterate, the Romans controlled what would be today Germany in modern, uh, modern um, Europe. Um, so let's kind of move on. All right, so we remember Rome like the Greeks for their, their democratic institutions. Unlike Greece, the Romans had something called a representative government. That's what we have. They elected intellectual, knowledgeable officials to run their government. Now, unlike our government, the only people in society that voted and, and, and performed in office were wealthy individuals. The poor had very little representation. So their structure is very simple. They had two consuls. We would call them today presidents. They were elected or chosen by the senators. Senators represented the wealthy classes of, of, of Rome, the patricians. So it's democracy, but it's still fairly limited because, again, the poor slaves, ordinary people, didn't have a great voice. Um, tribunes did represent them, but the tribunes had very little power compared to senators and consuls. Uh, if you've ever heard of Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar was one of the first consuls. Eventually, he became an emperor when he eliminated the other consul. Um, the Romans also had their own laws called the Twelve Tables. Uh, these laws basically were similar to our laws. Um, they outlined punishments for crimes. They even had rules and regulations for borrowing and trade. So those were called the Twelve Tables. All right, we also remember the Romans for their architecture and engineering. If you go to Dickinson High School or if you go to Washington, D.C., you'll see Roman architecture all over the place, mostly in the form of columns. Uh, right here, you know, there are different types of columns like Corinthian, Ionic, Doric. I don't remember, but um, they're very similar in style, and again, they've been replicated throughout the centuries. Um, we also remember the, the, the Romans for their, their, the building of these big, you know, massive theaters. Or This is the Colosseum in Rome. It, this is modern-day Rome. Um, you can go into the Colosseum today. If you've ever seen the movie Gladiator, that's kind of where the movie took place. Um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty broken down. Um, I believe they do a lot of repairs just to maintain it. Um, modern, modern pollution is not hasn't been good to these structures. Uh, the Romans also had urban sewers, uh, underfloor heating in many of their homes, and even aqueducts. Aqueducts are basically ways to move water, basically piping systems. So, you know, we have a lot of these similar structures today. So we can thank the Romans for a lot of modern day engineering and architecture. All right, so a little bit about trade. The Romans were very important because they helped maintain roads throughout their empire. And one of the important roads that we'll talk about later on was called the Silk Road. The Silk Road uh, originated in China, and it was kind of a man-made or natural road that allowed merchants in China to trade goods with merchants in India and Persia and, and the Middle East. And, event, and the roads made their way all the way into, the, into Greece. Um, you know, you could connect the roads with, 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 um, with, with shipping. Um, so the, the Romans maintained these roads. Um, so that was very important, and, and it facilitated trade throughout this time period. It also helped to spread Christianity. We'll talk about Christianity a little bit. Um, you're going to have merchants that are Christians. They're going to move into other parts of the world, and they're going to kind of teach others about their religion. Same with Islam. Islam is going to spread along these roads. Buddhism is going to spread along these roads. Um, so the Silk Road was pro is probably, you know, when we have a, a quiz or a test, there's definitely a question about the Silk Road and why they were important. Uh, the Romans also used the Red Sea, the, the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean, 
to trade uh, goods as far north as the British Islands um, and, and, and even parts of Arabia, Persia, and India. So um, trade was very important to the Romans. All right, so um, the Roman Empire didn't last forever, mostly because of disease. Um, one problem with these roads, these roads also brought disease from Asia. So as time went on, populations decreased, and you had fewer men um, fighting uh, in, in armies. You had fewer taxes to, to raise. So as a result of that, that military weakening, the Romans eventually became unable to defend their empire. Um, one of the famous barbaric leaders who came in from the east was Attila the Hun. If you've ever seen Night at the Museum, that was Attila the Hun. Uh, and these barbaric groups were also known as, uh, you know, you the Huns, the Franks, the Vandals, and even the Visigoths. And, and these groups all basically took over Italy and Europe and even sacked Rome in 410. Um, here's a little map. So these groups are important because once they moved into these regions, they stayed there. And these, these barbarians eventually, their leaders became rulers. Eventually, kingdoms would emerge, and you're going to have modern-day nations eventually, like France, uh, Germany, um, England. So Europe is kind of born with the downfall of Rome. And again, Europe initially, it's going to be governed by these barbaric tribes. Um, and eventually, these barbaric tribes, they're going to have their rulers, and these rulers are eventually going to turn these tribal kingdoms into nation-states, like England, France, and Germany. All right, so in 476, actually, um, the, the, the Western Roman Empire ends. Again, these, these barbaric tribes take over and kind of, um, they maintain a lot of the, the Roman traditions like Christianity, but for the most part, you're going to have smaller little kingdoms. However, the Roman Empire is going to continue on in the, um, in the West, and it's going to be kind of turning into a new empire called the Byzantine Empire, ruled by a man named Constantine. He's important because he actually legalizes Christianity. We'll talk about the Byzantine Empire, um, you know, the next day. And that's uh, Constantine right there. All right, so our, our last piece of this lecture, we're going to kind of dive into some of the early religions. And if you don't know who this is, it's Jesus, our Lord, or at least Jesus Christ, um, the Lord and Savior if you're a Christian. Um, so before we have Christianity, um, most empires or civilizations were polytheistic. I mentioned that, the Greeks, the Romans, and they, they believed in many gods. Down here you've got some Greek gods. I'm not sure if you know who this is. Zeus, don't know who this is. Um, if you saw Wonder Woman, right, Wonder Woman kind of um, referenced the, the Greek guy. I guess she was, a, I guess her father was Zeus, right, if you, ever, if you saw the movie Wonder Woman. So polytheism is, the, is, is, the, is, the, is, is early religion. However, that's going to kind of change with Judaism. Um, Hebrew or, 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 you know, Judaism is really the earliest example or form of true monotheism. Um, the idea of a single God. And Judaism is going to um, begin on the east coast of the Mediterranean um, around 2000 BC, so kind of before the Romans even, you know, Roman Empire emerges. Um, Abraham is the father of Judaism. And Abraham basically wasn't a, a godlike divine figure, he was a prophet. He believes that God had chosen him to lead um, God's people. Um, and eventually the ideals or the ideas behind Judaism are going to take hold in Christianity and also um, Islam. So Judaism is kind of, again, the, the, um, the foundation for other monotheistic religions. Um, Jews uh, had their own set of laws called the Ten Commandments. Not sure if you know who this is. This is Moses. Um, and these commandments are still... Uh, you know, something that if you're a, a Catholic or a Christian, you still adhere to. Um, and the, the, you know, Jews or Hebrews, um, the story of Abraham, the story of, of, of the creation of their religion, 
is 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 written down in the Torah. Um, Jewish students today study the Torah. They memorize the Torah. The Torah is huge, hundreds and hundreds of pages that have to be memorized. It's in Hebrew. So Jewish students um, today have to also understand Hebrew to translate the Torah. So that's Judaism. I have some pictures, but it didn't work out. All right, let's get to Christianity. So Christianity emerges as a religion um, at basically, you know, during the, you know, towards the end of the Roman Empire. Uh, the birth of Jesus was considered a turning point in history. That's why we had B.C. and C.E. Uh, today, we don't call it after Christ or before Christ. It's really the common era. So the common era begins with the birth of Christ. Uh, if you don't know, Jesus was actually a Jewish religious leader, but he was kind of seen as a troublemaker by Roman officials. Um, he, you know, I'm not going to sit here and get into a long story, but he was a, a prophet. He was a teacher and he spread um, the beliefs, uh, you know, Christian beliefs, the idea, um, not Judaism, but a different set of beliefs. Um and uh, it was believed that he was the son of God. Um, he was very popular among the poor, uh, slaves and women. Um, he basically appealed to people who were hungry for answers about the harshness of life and who were just hopeful for an afterlife. Um, it's believed that he would heal the poor. Um, he became, you know, an icon. But that scared a lot of people, especially Jewish leaders, they believed he was radical. Um, he was going beyond the basic tenets of Judaism. And Roman officials were concerned that he was becoming a godlike figure. Um, so, you know, if you know the story, he was, um, you know, executed. Um, Peter and Paul are important. Um, both were, were, were students of Jesus, followers of Jesus. Peter was considered the first pope of the Catholic Church. Paul was a converted Jew, and they both spread the gospel after Jesus, um, you know, died, and and you know, according to the story, the narrative, he returned to heaven. These two men spread the gospel throughout the Mediterranean, helped kind of move Christianity um, to a greater place. Um, what what you know, the basic features of Christianity, if you don't know. Uh, the focus was on living a simple life, um, worship and reflection, very similar to some other religions we're going to learn about down the road. Um, leaders of the Christian religion would study um, and pray in monasteries. Monasteries kind of, a, you know, think of church. Martyrdom was very significant, the idea of dying for your, for your rather than giving up your beliefs. And that was kind of the idea that, you know, Jesus died for his beliefs. Um, the Gospels of, of Mark and Matthew and Luke, they are, again, followers and, and um, students of Jesus. Um, they're, 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 the story of, of Christianity um, is found in the New Testament. So that's kind of um, the written story. Um, and so we're going to end right here, but I, we're going to start. We're going to do a little activity when we're done um, or, or in class. Um, and we're going to try to understand why Christians were persecuted by the Romans. I kind of mentioned why, why Jesus was persecuted, but even after Jesus moves on, Christians are going to continue to be persecuted. And we're going to dive a little deeper into that. So I'm done right now. Thanks a lot. If you have to go back and write some things down. But again, make sure you focus only on what's underlined. Um, even then, if you don't feel like it's all important, focus on what you think is